Okay, dears. Today I'm going to show you how to make a plant holder out of a tin can, which I have here. This is actually um, a bean can. You can use, it's got a little dent in it, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> you can use a bigger can, a coffee can. You can use a smaller can like a soup uh, can. You can either poke holes in the bottom or put rocks uh, in the can before you put the soil in, but we'll get to it. The, the main point we're gonna do today is rust this can so it has that nice rusty patina. So in order to do that, you're going to need hydrogen peroxide. Now you can use the kind that I believe is 3% that you can get at the drugstore, but it's gonna take longer to rust that way. Um, I went to a beauty supply um, shop and got this 40 volume hydrogen peroxide where this is only 3%. So this is 40%. So it rusts a lot faster that way. Anyway, if you have plenty of time, don't care, your choice, but I was in a hurry, so I got this 40%. So you'll also need some distilled white vinegar that of course you can get anywhere, <clears throat> some salt, um, a spray bottle. This is a, just a bottle that is empty now and I'm going to use it. And of course, I'm going to mark it so that uh, if there's any left over, I'm going to put it under the sink. I'm not going to confuse it with what it was originally. And then to decorate it, we're going to need some um, jute. Uh, this is three-ply jute. Oops. Ta-da. And then um, some beads. I just brought a few up. Um, these are some red and kind of turquoise, and then I got some gold, and then I got some uh, just kind of brown ones. Really, the uh, main thing you need to look for is that the jute uh, will be able to thread through your beads, so that's a big part of the selection process. And then a pair of scissors. Hope I don't, didn't forget anything, but if I did, I'll mention it as we go along. I also wanted to take you outside and show you on my front porch uh, some that I had made a couple years ago, actually. They've survived two winters. They don't have plants in them, and they'll look prettier once I get the plants in them. Um, but it's not the right time of the year yet. It's close, but not for a couple of months or six weeks or so. So hang in there, we'll go outside and I'll show you uh, the ones that I've already created. Okay, so I'm outside now and these are the cans that I created um, last year. Hope you're able to see these well enough. Of course, they don't have flowers or whatever plants uh, in them yet, but you can see some of these are decorated slightly differently from others but they all sort of blend in and they look really nice and especially pretty when they do have flowers or plants in them, which uh, won't be too long before that actually happens. But I wanted to show you what they looked like and I wanted to show you how they survived a couple of winters already. Hello, okay, well I'm at my sink. And I'm going to make my solution. Um, I've got a measuring cup here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a small solution. But this can be doubled or tripled or whatever you need. And I'm going to take my hydrogen peroxide. This, as I said earlier, was the saloon mix. Saloon. Salon mix. I'm going to take um, half a cup of this. And then, let's see, where's my notes? Just a sec. <clears throat> okay, then a quarter cup of um, white vinegar, just plain, ordinary white vinegar that you get at the grocery store. So I'm just gonna put it in the same cup so that'll, whoops, bring it up to the three quarter. Good Lord three-quarter mark on my measuring cup. There you go. So that's all mixed up. And I'm going to put that in my spray bottle. I do have a funnel here. So hopefully it'll pour in the 
container, not all over me. Okay, that's good. So, hope you'll be able to see this. I'm gonna take my can and the spray bottle to the sink and just spray the heck out of it. Get nice and wet with this solution of hydrogen peroxide and white vinegar. And then I'm going to take my salt. I have some uh, iodized salt here, although I don't know if the iodized part is important, but anyway, that's what I have. And so that's what I'm using. I'm just pouring it kind of evenly. Hope you can see this okay. All over my can. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to hang in there. Just set it on the plate and let the magic happen. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it's already starting to rust up a bit. And uh, as I said earlier, the 40% peroxide solution, which you can get at beauty supply houses, um, increases the, t the amount of time, it doesn't increase, it decreases the amount of time uh, the solution works. But you can use plain old hydrogen peroxide as well. It just takes a little longer. So we're gonna let this sit and see what happens. And then I'll be back to show you the magic. Okay, this is working pretty quickly. This is after a couple of hours. I may give it one more coat and then wash it real nicely and put on the beads and then um, it'll be a planner for this year. All right, I'm taking the can. I'm gonna brush the salt off. Wow, looks pretty good, I would say. Mm-hmm. Terrific patina. Well, it works and it works quickly. So I'm gonna rinse this off and clean it up. And go on to the next step. All right, so, <clears throat> pardon me, for the last step, um, I've got my beautiful, rusty looking can. And, um, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm all froggy. Um, I'm going to take this jute and start at the top. I'm, I'm going to start at the bank, uh, back, and what I'm calling the back is where the, um, where is it, where the seam is, right here. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'll put a little dollop of glue there on the top to get it started. Press my jute into that and start going around and around and around. And I'm gonna to have to add a little glue every now and again. I hope you can see what I'm doing plainly. Just twisting it, keeping it even around and around. Okay then, I've selected some beads. I've got some red, uh, some red and black. Um, some smaller black beads. I've got a couple of copper tube shapes and I've got a couple of gold barrel shapes and I think this will be a, a nice combination. So I also have some tweezers. I went and got these so because I think I'm going to have trouble uh, pulling the jute through because it's pretty dense. So I'm going to take uh, the black. I'm going to start with the black and push it through. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that uh, before um, I started filming, I took some glue and put it on the end 
um, of the jute. And this stiffens it, of course, and brings it more to a point, so that'll uh, accommodate uh, pulling the beads through a lot uh, easier. So, okay, so I started with the black. Um, I'm going to take one of these gold uh, barrel shapes, and then I'm going to take the solid red. So I've got five so far. I'm going to take um, another black. All right, I've got three so far, rather. Another black. So that's four beads. And let's see. I've got um, this <coughs> red and black bead. And I selected the beads largely based on the fact that they're going to be um, large enough uh, to get the jute through. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. Um, okay, so the last thing I have is this copper colored uh, tube. I'm gonna put that on. And actually one more of this small red bead. Okay, so that's looking like that for now. Um, just make one knot. I'll come back to it in a little bit. I want to get the other beads on first. Why? I don't know. Just how I do things, I guess. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to start a little lower. Um, and I'm going to go opposite of what I did on this side. So I'm going to start with the red bead, the small red bead. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do my little glue trick. So I'm going to cut um, the jute at an angle, try to make kind of a point, and I'm going to put a little glue on it, both sides, kind of squish the glue on, and then take a cloth, in my case it's a paper towel, and pull it through to kind of make the jute pointy to accommodate um, the beads going through. So. There, that looks good. Can I hope you can see that? There we go. Okay, so I'm going to start with the smaller red bead because that's the last one I did on this end, and I'm going to drop it just a little bit, maybe uh, a third of an inch or so. And then that is followed by the little copper tube. turn it a little bit so you can see more of what I'm doing um, and then I've got the red and black bead and after that I've got a black bead a smaller black bead whoa that doesn't want to go in very well try the other one Huh. That's interesting, because it certainly went in on the other side. Well, okay, so instead of that, I'll put the, uh, the gold. And the uh, solid color red. I really would like to get this black bean on here. Just doesn't want to go through. Um, okay, it so happens that the jute is kind of fat on this end, and it's, it gets slimmer right here. So I'm gonna cut it. Um, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna take these two off. I'm going to cut it to where it's slimmer. It doesn't give me a lot of uh, room to play with, but let's hope it works out. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start over. I'll put some glue on here. Put 
bring the jute to a point. Okay, let me see if now I can get the black bead through. Wow, what in the world? Life is full of issues. Things that you expect to go your way and then they don't. But it is going my way. It's coming through. It's just a little bit. I'm going to try to take my tweezers and force it through because I would like to keep my pattern. Why? <clears throat> For the sake of continuity. Well, this is definitely an issue. What I think I may do is um, stop the video and search for a couple of black beads that are perhaps, um, that have holes maybe a little bigger. Because again, I'm getting, getting to a um, fatter part of this jute. And it is inconsistent, it always is. Okay, so uh, let me pause this and see if I can find black beads uh, with bigger holes. Okay, then I've had a little bit of luck. Um, this black bead, this one that I found, has a bigger, bigger opening. Um, so I'm able to use that. Although it was still kind of difficult to get on. And then next I should put this big one, big red bead. As I said earlier, I'm going opposite of what I did here. And then um, the gold. And I was going to say I was going to end with black, but my goodness, I just don't have enough room, so I'm going to let it go. So I'm going to uh, knot it. That's gonna not be easy. Because there's simply not very much room to tie this. So um, instead of doing that, I'm gonna put some glue on the end. Let it dry and then I'll cut it. This one's got a knot on it, so I'm able to uh, cut this. And I'm also going to put some glue to help it stay in place because by virtue of experience, this can come apart. There we go. I'm going to cut the end off of this. Huh, landed in the jar, in the can. And put a little bit more glue. There we go. So, um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna stick the, the um, beaded part to the can so it doesn't just kind of float. <clears throat> and so there is basically the finished product. Now if you want to, you can put another uh, bit of cording, um, this, in this case it's jute, around uh, the can and make a bow. I did some of mine uh, the last year or two like that. But I think this looks real nice as it is. So now all it needs is some, uh, some rocks for drainage, some soil and a pretty plant and you're ready to go. Thanks for watching. And I hope you check out some of my other videos. I don't have very many at this point, but I plan to continue on a weekly basis, sometimes twice a week. 
And um, if you enjoy this, please like and share and subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate it. I'm a very small channel, um, but I'm growing at, at a, a decent pace. And um, I just want to get to more people so I can share uh, my craft. So, okay, thanks and have a great day. And I'll see you at the next video. Bye.